the mindset is, oh, I don't want to do that because it sounds hard. Okay, so let's talk about the weight thing because I told you I used to weigh over 200 pounds. Okay, being overweight was hard and losing weight was also hard. You have to pick your hard. Being broke is hard. Having money is also hard. You have to pick your hard. 100%. Like everything in life is hard. Like they like, think, okay, at this point, no, at this point, people be trying us and all kinds of things and it is still hard. Which goes back to your point earlier, you gotta make a decision. So that I don't have to work like that because I mm. have kids. Okay. And if I have to be like, Oh my God, I have a thousand dollar payment and insurance and blah, blah, blah. then that means I have to be homeless. Then that means, you know what I mean? I feel I like- I do, but it, no, I think it's gonna light a bigger fire under you. There is no you, bigger fire under my behind there than is, there is. You know you gotta pay an extra $2,000 for no reason, you know what I mean? And, it, and not just that, it's gonna make you feel better too. Yeah. Like I'm the same way, like I'm, I'm a saver. Yeah. I worked at Taco Bell and saved fifty thousand dollars, like I told That's you. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm a saver to the core, but when you, it starts to change that image in your head of yourself when you do get in your nice car mm -hmm. and you in your nice house and you have, like I can't chill because of the overhead that I put into my. That's but, my thing. But it, but it shows that I'm worth it. You know what I'm saying? And it builds that self confidence. It does a lot of weird mental things that mm -hmm. I didn't think it was actually gonna do. Because mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I'm like, me getting Lambo is not gonna make me work harder. <laughs> it made me work harder for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm the same. I was with one of my mentors who does a ton of money, and he's like, you should get a nice car. I'm like, no. Like, I'm, it's not gonna make me whether I have a nice car or not. Like, I'm still gonna work just as hard. I'm still gonna wake up at 3:30. I'm still yeah, gonna yeah. do it. He's like, get it. I'm telling you though, it's a game changer. Because first, that makes me feel better. It makes me be like, okay, the work I'm putting in is actually paying off. Mm -hmm. um, gets me more business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Gets that, me in yeah. different rooms. Um, I do one ad with a nice car. It's going to do better than me just talking mm -hmm. instantly. Just like, so I can use it for marketing. So there's so much more benefits that I didn't see mm -hmm. just because I didn't want to have an extra three to 5000 a month payment. You know what yeah. I mean? No, yeah. But that three to 5000 a month payment is paying off tenfold because first of all, it just makes me feel good. Yeah. You know, I'm like, dang, I really, like, I did it. You're like, I did that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then it's like, okay, now I'm good. I can't stop. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep going. Like, I already did it once. I could do it again. Yeah. It really does a lot. So I'm, I'm pushing you to get the car. Because yeah. it's going to really make you feel different. Yeah. Is it necessary? Of course not. But the thing that's different from the way you and I are doing it is we're not attaching our happiness to the car. No. Or to the result. We attach it to the work. Yeah. And the car and the, all the other stuff is just a byproduct of putting in the work every day. Honestly, because it's when you're working, you're becoming somebody different. It's forging you into the person that now has to drive the car. 100%. Because, and it's, it's not a material thing, though. Yeah. Like, a lot of people get it messed up. Like, it's yeah. not a material thing. It's not about that. You're right. It's you're, you're, you're transforming yourself into like, hey, I'm that guy or I'm that girl mm -hmm. that's worth it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to think about it, it does come with a shifting of a mindset because Significant. like, you know, I grew up in Venezuela and there was that and I were, these were one of the core memories you were of born mine. There? I was born in Venezuela. Yeah. When you born and here? raised when I was eight. Okay. I was four when I moved from Egypt. So nice. Yeah, so that was like five minutes ago that you moved here. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so um I one of my core memories is my parents not having enough money to feed me and I remember they used to feed me the uh tomatoes with salt. And at that time, you're a kid, so you just think you're eating. But now that you're an adult, you're like, my God, I came from nothing. Great. And the decisions that I've made over a extended period of time that my husband has made over an extended period of time has determined where we are currently in life. Because people just think that it just happens magically. No, your decisions are going to equal what your life looks like. So a lot of times I tell my kids, hey, if you want something, you have to go get it nobody's gonna help you my brother actually told my daughter natalie now that you're about to be 18 nobody gives a crap about you and you gotta go out there and make it happen and i was like damn cam you like, know what's the best about that though <laughs> that's so that's so freeing yeah and like that's so that's a good feeling to know that hey you're in control you're in the driver's seat man you are in control a lot of people take accountability like rosa that's her fault that's her fault like no yeah. anything that happens like i I take extreme accountability to the point where it's super delusional. Like if my house were to get hit by lightning, 
I would be like, damn, I shouldn't have picked that house. Yeah. I should have picked the next. Like that's yeah. the level of accountability that I take for myself in everything I do in my life. So yeah. someone's unhappy or something's wrong or whatever the issue is, I'm like, okay, what could I have done different? Yeah. It's, it's that high level of accountability that puts me in the driver's seat and puts me in control of my life that makes me be like, hey, I, I can do it. Like I'm, yeah. it's, it's up to me whether I'm gonna be happy or not, successful or not, winning or not, it's up to me. Yeah. No one else, there's no outside circumstances that's gonna mess up my path to being the person I wanna be. Yeah, and to touch on that as well, a lot of people are like, well, when I was growing up, I didn't have it like that, so that's why they use their past as an excuse of why they're not hitting their goals and they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Listen, if I was to sit here and tell you my life story, people would be like, that is the underdog story of the year. Right? I was, in my family, I was deemed the black sheep. Like, oh, this that's girl's surprising. gonna destroy. Shut up. <laughs> I was gonna... <laughs> Are you being sarcastic? Yes, I'm being sarcastic. What do you mean? Anyway. <laughs> and so they were like, oh, this girl's going to destroy her whole life with her own hands. But one day I just made a different decision and I continued making those different decisions. And I look back and I am the most successful overall. Like I've been married for a very long time. Yep. I all my children are with my husband. You know, I, I've done things that other family members were not able to do, and I am the most financially successful. Why? Because I made different choices. We grew up with the same family, the same, you know, everything. So what does it take? It takes for you to be, to think differently than the rest of the family, right? And so I think that people use that, their past is an excuse, but I use that to fuel, like, that's what, how I'm not gonna keep going. 100%. And the thing is, like, like, why do you think rich people's kids usually end up losing all the money for the family? Listen, or they bro. end up being drug addicts or whatever, it's because your past, my past, like, hard things? Yeah. Like, what's the they saying, like, you. hard people, or hard times make soft men, soft yes. times make, or whatever Good the men. saying is, you know what I'm saying? Like. You have to go through hard things, even when you do get, I was literally listening to this this morning. Mm -hmm. When you get to high levels of success, mm -hmm. you have to do hard stuff. Yeah. Or else you're gonna just, you can, you have the luxury of being comfortable. You know, you have the luxury of just chilling, hanging out, like, you, you have to do hard, which is why I wake up every day at 3.30 a.m., yeah. which is why I kill myself in the gym every day, which is why I constantly learn and grow, because if I wanted to chill, I could chill, but that can only last right. so long. Yeah. Until you're just, you're unhappy, start losing your money, you start getting bored, and bad things come from being bored. Yeah. Doing bad stuff comes from just being bored. Drugs mm -hmm. come from being bored. Do whatever, that, that's from boredom. So if you keep yourself busy, you stay on top of things, stay grinding like you can't get bored and you, you're gonna keep progressing through life. Yeah, and listen, and it's okay. Like People are so afraid of doing hard things. Listen. Because they don't I, do enough of it. So they, but hold on. Like, the mindset is, oh, I don't want to do that because it sounds hard. Okay, let's talk about the weight thing. Because I told you I used to weigh over 200 pounds. Okay, being overweight was hard and losing weight was also hard. You have to pick your hard. Being broke is hard. Having money is also hard. You have to pick your hard. 100%. Like, everything in life is like they like, think okay at this point no at this point people be trying us and all kinds of thing and it is still hard which goes back to your point earlier you got to make a decision make a decision What's of what you hard? want your life so yeah. yesterday there was a table i wanted built my husband wasn't home i'm in my soft girl era i'm not building it guess what who's the next in charge my son liam i said hey man come over here how old is liam he's 11. <laughs> i just wanted people to know yeah, 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 yeah. he's 11. <laughs> i said i need you to put this table together. He wants to be an engineer. He's wanted to be an engineer already for like five years. Yep, shouldn't have told you that. You better put him to work. Correct. And <laughs> yeah. so he had his little Allen key and he's going, going, going. He's like, man, it feels like I'm not making progress. I was like, ooh, this is a good life lesson. I'm about to teach him right now. And he's there with the Allen key. And I said, son, in life, you're gonna make decisions and you're gonna keep going, keep going, and it's gonna seem like you're not getting anywhere. But if you keep trying, I'm telling you, you will see the end result. And he was like, okay, mom, and he kept going. Long story short, he built the table. I had some friends over yesterday and I said, guys, Liam built that Crazy. table. And they were like, oh my God, Liam, I. He was, he felt like the man. As he is like, the man, I built sure. that table for my mom. And I didn't save him either. I let him struggle through the whole four legs 
I was like, you're gonna, I just watched him and he's there trying to figure out why the nail wasn't going in, why? Because I am raising men. I want him to understand that he one day, his wife is going to depend on him being like a rock. Like no matter what happens, he has to decide to to be strong for his family. Like my husband, listen, my husband, the world could be caving in, I'm screaming, ah! And Jose's like, babe, I got it. And when he tells me I got it, I know he got it. Cause he's built that, that story with me, sure. right? The and reputation. so because of the decisions that he has continually made over the course of our marriage, I have that trust that he got it. And he always does. And so <clears throat> not being afraid of doing hard things and people like resist change. And let me tell you, I am not one that loves change. Yep. I like structure and when things have to pivot, I have a hard time internally. I still do it. But at that moment, I'm like, okay, this change is going to benefit me. And then I have to shift my mindset into, okay, we got to pivot. And success, you got to be resourceful. You got to be willing to shift. You got to have like that new mindset. You got to learn to be okay with doing hard things. And I heard Alex Hermosi, is that his name? Yeah. That fear is a mile wide, one inch deep. Hmm. And that is so true. Because we think that it's like, oh my God, we're going to die out here. No, do it scared, bro. Do it scared. It's going to happen. The return on that. Listen, this whole thing of me building this company, I've had to make some decisions that have sure. scared me. Working but with me. Scared working, you. Yeah. Like you I know? was like, what if he, you know, takes my money? For sure. All of this stuff. But I knew I was like, no, I have to. Back to your point I about fear, to. though. Courage isn't. Um, absence of fear absence of fear it's mm -hmm. in spite of fear in spite you know what i mean like we were scared every day every day you bro. know anything and can happen and a lot of people think like once you get to a certain level mm -mm. it's less scary if anything it's, it's more, more scary because the risks get bigger and, and bigger more and people bigger. rely on you it's not just on you anymore it's not yeah. about you paying your bills it's about everyone else paying their bills so it's like it gets it only gets harder like even in the gym like you don't get it doesn't get easier the weight doesn't get lighter you just no. get stronger yeah you know, but it's still, you got to keep going up in the weights. You got to keep going And it's going still up. heavy as hell every single time. But yeah. I'm building that resilience, those calluses to be able to overcome anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and it's the power to overcome. Like, okay, no matter what comes my way, that mental toughness, I feel like, at least here in America, we're almost like programming people to be weak in the mind. And for me, I don't, in my house, I'm like, no. I don't, I don't vibe with that, and I don't want my sons to come under that sway of like, oh, we have to be this way because everybody else thinks that that's what's acceptable. Hey, to each his own, but in my house, I want my sons to stand up and to think for themselves and to make decisions and to do things scared. That's why they're in jiu-jitsu. I asked Liam yesterday, I'm like, hey man, how'd it go in jiu-jitsu? He's like, man, I got my butt whooped. Nice. And I was like, good. Why? Because the next time he's gonna go and he's gonna do what he gotta do, right? For sure. And so, but the week before that, he earned the stripe. Yeah. So he had a win, then what happened? Life crushed him, and then he's gonna have to now bounce back. And I didn't, ooh, I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so get better. You don't like to lose? Get better. Yep. And he was like, I am, mom. I'm like, okay. A lot of people have this discussion. I wonder what you think. Is it, do you like winning or do you hate losing? Hmm. I don't like to lose. <laughs> yeah, a lot, you notice that with a lot of high level people. I don't like We to don't lose. like losing. We don't, winning's cool, but, but it's. But losing, no. Ugh. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> I, like, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's a shift that I realized. Like, yeah. I really just hate losing yeah and just not getting what i said i'm gonna do done yeah like I, winning's cool but it's not i care about not losing yeah and for me i'm very like tactical like when i have something going on i don't stop carolyn will tell you i am like a pit bull with a bone in my mouth like this is going to until we see the end and we finish this is what we're doing right for now sure. I'm and the too. ability to have a plan and then the strategy to execute and then see it through mm. all the way to the end. That's where people, they have like, oh, I, w I have this goal. And then they don't have a strategy on how they're going to get it done. They don't have a plan. They're just like, just saying they have a goal. But what are the action steps to get then here? Let's say they do have a plan. And then they don't do the third part, which is see the plan through. You have to, then, don't stop until you finish. And then let me That's ask you what this. I told Liam with the table. Yeah, and then let me ask you this. 
How many times has the plan you've created worked out the way you had it? Almost never. <laughs> you got to pivot a thousand times. It will never work out, but so many people get stuck in the planning phase. Where it's like, okay, That's I'm gonna, where dreams I'm gonna, gonna die. I'm gonna become a lash artist. I'm gonna do mm -hmm. it. I'm just gonna plan. My studio's gonna look like this. Mm -hmm. They'll plan. I'm gonna make a website. For I had a girl make a website for five months. I'm like, none of my clients have websites, and they crush it. Mm -hmm. Like imperfect action is much better than just perfect action. Because yeah. you're never gonna get it perfect. You're gonna make a website. It's like. That's so where you know, everyone goes wrong. Go ahead. You know why that person, it took them five months to get the website because they didn't hire Aesthetic Edge, who is the people who work for me. Okay? Is that a Shout plug? out to Flo and Christina. Is that a plug? That was a smooth plug. That is a smooth plug because you brought it up. They have a quick turnaround on their fire. Anyway, I have to see. I'm not a hitter. I put my girls on. As you should. As I should. Of but course. The ability to see something through, because everybody just focuses on the excuses. Like you were saying, oh, well, my kids, oh, I don't know if I could still be successful. That one hurts I... me the most, though. I don't have kids right now, but, like, kids aren't an excuse. They're the reason. Yeah. They're not an excuse. You know why? Because Natalie's like, mom, my tuition is due. What am I going to tell her? Crazy. Go get a job? And that, that, it was no. crazy. Everyone I talked to, I feel kind of bad for them, like a stranger, because uh, some guy was inspecting the car yesterday, and we had to go for, like, a five-mile ride. Mm -hmm. He's a big, bigger, heavy set dude, right? In Guess, your Lambo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't think I fit in here. I'm like, brother, you better figure it out, bro. I don't know. So mm -hmm. we're driving. He's like, so what do you do? And we're talking. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I feel, I feel bad for anyone that talks to me. Uber drivers, just regular people. Because I'm just like, bro, look at you. You can't even get in a car. Oh my God. You know, but it was what he needed to hear. Yes. And then he's like... I injured my, I used to be in good shape, but I injured my back and, you know, I got three kids. And I'm like, bro, your kids aren't an excuse. What are you doing right now? They're the reason, bro. What are you talking about? Mm. Like, what do you mean? They're the reason you aren't in the peak shape for your wife, for your family. What are you talking about? And I just chewed him out for like 20 minutes. For the five miles. <laughs> no, we, we went a little longer <laughs> because I wasn't done. He oh, stuck. He stuck with me. You gotta keep driving, bro. Yeah, we kept driving. And I'm oh. like, but, but the thing is like, I forgot where I was going with that, but it's, yeah, kids, like, they're not an excuse. They're the reason why you need to be in the best shape you possible. You the find best, a way. You have, like, I, that one, I will not yet so understand, ever. you find a way. I think that one of the marks of a great entrepreneur is they're resourceful. How can I get this done? Instead of focusing on the issue, like... Okay, my kids are screaming and doing all this stuff all day. All right, I'm going to get up an hour early before my kids get up. I'm going to get my practice in. Or I'm going to put my kids to bed at this time. You got to get resourceful so that you can meet the goal. So that you can go out there and really just do what it is you said you would do. And guess what? That's going to put courage in your children's hearts. Because Landon, that little boy says mom you're the best lash artist that ever lived mom lash artistry is at the top he speaks life into me <laughs> he does yeah, yeah. right carolyn yeah. listen one day he came in here and i don't think it clicked for him that i'm the owner mm -hmm. and one day he's like oh i forgot what we were talking about but it came up that i pay the rent here mm -hmm. he goes mom you pay the rent here i was like yeah this is mommy's and he and i said this is ours because it's for our family yeah. he goes like his chest got a little higher. He was like, oh, wow. that's why he didn't say hi to you when you came up he in here. He straight punked me. He straight punked you because he's in. like, who's this? <laughs> he said, Who, who's this? <laughs> I got to check in though. Yeah. Now like, you yo, man, check I'm in. here, homie. Like, hey, we good, I don't want dude. no smoke. But that, <laughs> it creates courage in your children to see that you saw it through. Key right there. Kids don't say as you say. They say as you. What is it? I keep they messing up all my quotes No, today. no, no, no. So they are going to watch you. Yes. And not what you say to them is what they'll do, is what they see you yes. do, is what they're going to replicate. My daughter is an overachiever. This girl, if she gets a B, she's like, oh my God, yep. this is the worst. And I'm like, Natalie, did you do your best? Yeah. But that's not the grade that I wanted. Why? Because she sees that's how I am. Yep. So that she doesn't accept failure. She doesn't accept anything other than. And when you, how do they learn that? 
just by being around That's me. It. I don't tell them, hey, you I'm, have to get an A. No, they're seeing that I'm going above the call of duty, beyond. I'm doing things scared. My daughter, listen, one time I was so stressed out, I'm driving and I literally just started crying because I was so overwhelmed. And she's like, mom, what's happening? I said, I have a lot going on. I have this project, this, da 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 And she goes, mom, it's okay. If anything I know about you is that you're gonna make it happen. Crazy. Why? How does that make you feel? Great. I stopped crying at that moment. Yeah. Why? Because I. That made me cry more. <laughs> <Is it? laughs> like, you know why? Yeah. Because I built that confidence in their hearts that I'm going to do the hard yep. things, that I'm going to do what it takes, that I'm not going to use it as, as an excuse, that I'm going to continue to push and push and push until the expected end, <clears throat> which is what the heck I'm trying to do. And it, it's been hard. Yep. But guess what? To be the top number one salon in Fort Lauderdale, my training, we just rolled out the review thing. Just rolled it out, five-star review all across the board. Crazy. When have you ever heard of an online training doing that? And so my my salon has a five-star review, my products. Why? Because I, I won't take anything less. You know, I don't put out things unless they're excellent. And I put that pressure on myself and sometimes it's crushing. Of course. It's crushing to have such a high expectation of yourself, but... I execute until the end. When Liam was building that table, I'm like, you're not gonna stop until you finish. Because I don't want my son to be like, when life gets hard and it starts to get crushing, that he's gonna be like, I don't have to finish. That's not what I'm but teaching. But then what happens the next time you do something hard? It's not as scary. Your thermos, so we call yeah. it raising your thermostat. Yeah. So right now, most people's thermostat is, is at like, let's say 65 degrees. Yeah. You do something a little hard, now it's at 67. Correct. And you keep raising that thermostat. So yes, what, you might have been crushed at 69 degrees, mm -hmm. but now it's going to take 77 degrees to crush. You have to constantly raise your thermostat. And one way to do that and to speed that up is to get around people's thermostats are raised. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm tripping on buying um, a half a million dollar car, I see my boy buy a $5 million car, my thermostat is through the yeah. roof. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. cool. So now I'm able to operate at that high level. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So you are raising a the thermostat for your kids. So now they're around, all, they're around all these little softies in college or high school. They're just like, look at these punks, man. I'm about to smoke bomb. That's what I think. Yeah. When I look at my peers, yeah. people around my age group, even older people to be quite honest, mm -hmm. but like you say people around my, I'm just like, you guys are still drinking? How old are you? Like you guys are still clubbing? <laughs> What are you doing? Don't you have goals? Don't you have things to do? Yeah. It's so hard for me to relate to people and to talk to people. I was talking, I was talking about, I was talk, talking to some girl, right? Mm -hmm. And I was I'm leaning in. I'm like, what I was, happened? I was talking to this girl, uh -huh. and she's like, <laughs> she's like, damn, you really don't do nothing. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, so you're telling me all you do is, is work. wake up, go to the gym, <laughs> go to the gym mm -hmm. work at six, get off at seven or eight um read and sleep but you don't go out you don't club you don't party i'm like no she's like you're lying like you're you're, lying. you're not telling me something and i thought about it i'm like i could see how that could look yeah, from another does. person's yeah, perspective yeah, yeah, yeah. like this dude's missing something he's not telling me something i'm like no that's actually like what i he's do like he works for the government or something <laughs> like something something's <laughs> missing or he's like you know what i'm saying yeah. i was like, laughing i'm like i can't relate to like normal yeah. people you know what i'm saying like, i can't talk to normal people because they're just like what is wrong with you yeah but i'll talk to my boy that's working just as hard as me if not harder and then yeah. we're just talking about okay i'm coming out with this kind of like i don't know what else like i can't relate to like normal things and so here's the thing fire catches fire you got to be around people who are burning Have on to. fire because if i get close to you what's going to happen to me i'm going to catch that fire what happens is that people are so afraid because they're surrounded by people who are also afraid and they never leave those circles because they're like, oh, what if I fail? How are you gonna fail if you give it everything you got and you refuse to be denied and you keep going and keep going and accept failure? Failure is the best teacher. You're gonna fail, you fail, 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 you, fail, you only until fail if you, you win. Quit. You only fail if you Correct. quit. You're learning. There's no, there's, uh, it's so corny and you hear it's all true. these sayings, but like but failure true. doesn't exist. It really doesn't. You only mm -hmm. fail if you quit. Yeah. Like if I take a loss, I learn and I move forward. I don't fail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, it didn't work that way. Let me do something else. Didn't, I mean, keep pivoting, keep pivoting. You got No to. matter how the long resourcefulness. you take, you have to be, like, you just have to keep being resourceful, pivoting, and figure it out. Yeah. And it's so easy nowadays, as long as you just don't stop. Yeah, and let me tell you what happened once. So there was a girl I was training here, and she was having 
trouble putting on the lashes and i was like that's odd you know like yeah. i was trying to figure out what was the problem long story short i just so happened to be looking from the right angle and seeing that she was like floating with how she was and i said can you see good and she was like yeah she was wearing glasses so i'm thinking she, she got we good, went good. i sent carolyn i'm like hey go pick me up some magnifying glasses from walgreens and then when she put them on she was able to do the set and i was like had i not seen you you would have thought that lashing wasn't for you you would have gave up because there was an obstacle people oh like most people they stop when they see that first obstacle sure. they never figure out okay this obstacle <clears throat> sucks i'm gonna have to become someone different in order to overcome the obstacle but at the end i'm gonna be where i want to be because let me tell you what's scary is that you're gonna be working at Publix at 65 years old because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. What hard do you Every want? time I see an elderly person bagging my groceries, I just want to hug them. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, like I, I feel bad that they're yeah. bagging my stuff, yeah. you know? But then I remember like they're here because of the multiple decisions that they made throughout the entire lifetime that now they have they can enjoy their the rest of their life and sure. that for me is heartbreaking bro heartbreaking so we do the hard things now so that later on our families our children our children's children can reap the benefits of this so somebody asked me oh your daughter doesn't want to be a lash artist i said for what she's going to inherit this why would she do that? Yeah. She let her go to college. She wants to be a surgeon. She can be a surgeon so that she can do my facelift when I get real old. I'm going to be like this, snatched. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm invested. I'm going to tell it. her. No, hey. no, no. I know it is. That's why I'm laughing. Because I know, I know. that's your plan. That's my plan. I'm going to be like, remember oh who paid God. for your college and the associates? <laughs> that was my, you know. That was your, that was that was your down payment. <laughs> Correct. And so. That's crazy. My daughter, my children, they're going to inherit a multi-million dollar business. For sure. Right? And so. And, but I'm teaching them hard things. I don't want my kids to grow up thinking that everything's Gucci. No. Natalie said something the other day. I said, no, that's my money. Oh, well, well daddy's money is my money. No, daddy's money is also my money. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, we give you our money, but you're also going to have to work. Got to. You know what I'm saying? Because I want my kids... The main thing is to have work ethic. If they have work ethic, they'll make it in any industry that they decide to pursue they that work ethic goes with you wherever you go and i feel like if you have that you will be successful you will do things scared you will have the courage to continue to press 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 until you meet the expected end like when i started working with asia she was a little bit more shy now mm -hmm. she's like why because fire catches fire for sure you and know? we're talking about I want you to keep talking, but we're talking about hard and resourcefulness, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll show you one of my good friends. Um, and then let's let's see if we still have it. And if we're talking about excuses, right, with that dude, mm -hmm. which is why I was hard on that guy yesterday. I was like, you picked him a new one. I'll, I'll show you why. This is one of my good friends. <gasps> wow. Okay. And we're going to pop up a, a photo of him. I was just with him last week. Talk about hard. See, this is what I'm talking about, man. Not just that, though. So he's, much respect for that look, guy. He's one of the top speakers in the world. He goes on tour with Tony Robbins. He knows The Rock. Like, he's inspired millions of people. He doesn't and have legs or one arm. He has. He and, only has one arm. And his arm other arm has torso. one finger on it. So that's my boy, Nick. And we're. I saw him speak. He's one of the best speakers, honestly, one of the best speakers in the world. Wow. I don't and, follow him. Yeah, massive speaker. So mm -hmm. he was doing his gig, and it was the first time I heard him talk. And earlier that day, I was tripping on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I'm kidding. You know, I do ads, right? Mm -hmm. And my accounts weren't working. I'm just like, why is this happening? You know, this sucks. Mm -hmm. I hate Facebook. Just the biggest victim in the world. Oh, God. You know, this is like six months ago, six, yeah. seven months ago. None of my accounts were working. It was just a big headache with Facebook. I'm like, why? Then I went to go see my boy Nick speak. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I am so soft. Mm -hmm. He has no legs, no one arm that has one finger on it. His other arm doesn't, you know, it doesn't have an arm. And I'm just like, I'm tripping about my Facebook account's not working. And then when he was speaking, he said something that really, we, we, we talked after he spoke. I said how good it was. 
And then I'm like, bro, I was going through my Facebook stuff. And then he was like, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Like, what's the gift in this? Because mm -hmm. he could have asked himself when he was growing up, why did this, why did God make me like this? And then that shifted my life. Literally. Now I never ask that question. Why is this happening? Like, what's the gift in this happening for me? Or what is this teaching me? 100%. It's teaching you resourcefulness. It's teaching you to endure hard things, Cause, cause so many things. After that, instead of me complaining about why Facebook isn't working, after that, I, mm. I asked myself a different question. Yeah. And you will find in life, it's, it's about the questions you're asking yourself. Yeah. Instead of me saying, why is this happening? I said, okay, what else can I do? Yeah. What can I do different? So then I figured it out. It yeah. took me, up until that point, it's been, Facebook's been harassing me for like four months. I couldn't figure it out. Mm -hmm. I literally figured it out in one day. I'm like, okay, I just got to pivot and then mm -hmm. do this. And... I wasn't a victim anymore. I had my problem resolved. And I'm just like, this is, it's so crazy how the power of the questions you're asking yourself mm -hmm. can change everything. Everything. And I, every time I see him, I literally was with him two days ago. I'm like, bro, that literally changed my life. Like, That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. that was crazy. Listen, so I do Spartan races with my husband and a lot of times there's people in wheelchairs and I love the Spartan races because if you see somebody in a wheelchair and we're coming to the monkey bar, it's like, they raise them and they bang it out. And I'm like, damn, that's how everyone should be. You see somebody who needs your help and they're there to win. They're there to yeah. finish. Yeah. No matter what their obstacles are, like, oh man, maybe they don't have legs or whatever. Like, that doesn't stop them. No. I love seeing people like that. It lights a fire in me. I'm like, man, if they can do it, there's sky's the limit. And which, I love that they don't use their life as an excuse. Which I is love what that. makes me mad about that guy yesterday. I'm like, bro, you're so healthy. You have everything going. You have both your legs. You have both hands. You have a beautiful family. You have everything going for you. And this is how you decide to show up. This is your decision in life. Oof. When this guy has no legs, no arms, decides to speak with Tony Robbins, be one of the highest paid speakers in the world, that's the decision he's made, and this is the decision you made. Wow. Fuck that. I'm not accepting that. You're way better than that. And sometimes it takes someone to see more in yourself than you see that's going to make that shift for you. Yeah. I guarantee that guy is going to change. Oh, I guarantee for sure. It for sure. There's no way he's not going to think about no. me for the rest of his life. There's and he's no probably going to tell his wife, and his wife's going to be like, yeah, yep. he was right. 100%. So... It's called accountability. And 100%. You, you held them accountable because... For sure. I'm going to tell people how it is. Oh, I like know. Like when you texted me. Like I'm not going to ever sugarcoat because that's doing you a disservice. Yeah. That's doing him a disservice. That's doing his family a disservice. Yeah. If I'm not like, bro, like what are you doing? You really got to step up. And another point I wanted to bring up earlier is like, you know, we're always keep busy. Like depression is a luxury. Did you send me that the other day? Because 50 Cent said it. And I'm oh, like, yeah, I did send you it. sent it to me, right? Mm -hmm. Depression is a straight up luxury. <laughs> like if your life is so good that you have time to be depressed about something, mm -hmm. like that right there is a, a mental shift right there. Like if someone is depressed and they're like, damn, I'm depressed. Like I don't have the luxury to be depressed. We don't have time. It's not even, it, yes, I don't have time. But also on top of that, it's like my clients don't care if I'm depressed. <laughs> they want they want leads they want yeah. to make some money yeah my family doesn't care if i'm depressed i got i pay my parents bills they don't care if i'm depressed i got to pay their bills yeah the the banks don't care if i'm depressed i got to well, make gonna, payment correct so it's like if you have the luxury of being depressed first off that puts you in a like that shifts your mentality like this is a luxury my life is better than i thought it was it's not as bad as i think it is and it's going to make you act different yeah that goes back to my point of asking yourself different questions yeah shifting your like like life is a i believe i'm fucking up all my quotes today but life is a mirror not a window mm -hmm. some shit like that i don't know i don't know i don't know but the point is like it's all about the pers uh perception you give yeah whatever meaning it is like Hermosi talks about it all the time mm -hmm. it's like what meaning are you giving behind those words what's the meaning behind what's happening in your life yeah if you can make that mental shift your life yeah. can change drastically and you know what also let's talk about the whole victim thing i think you brought up that For up. sure i was like, a victim let me tell you something that is one of my biggest pet peeves in life when people act like they cannot get ahead because somebody did. Listen, like I told you earlier, if I told you my story, you'd be boohoo crying right now. Yep. I just refuse not to be that. I'm not that. How about that? I'm not that. Yep. I'm not a victim. No matter how many people have burned me, how many things I've had to endure, how many things I had to overcome in my life, I am not a victim. And that's how I decide to show up. 
I am a winner. And what do winners do? They see things through, they don't have excuses, they do the hard things, they go past where most people are and all of that. And that mentality is what I'm imparting into my children. You're a winner and winners do hard things. But guess what? Winners finish. There is an alternative universe where there is a Rose that decided to make the other decision and decide to make her past be the, re the excuse why she's not where she wants to be. There's two Roses right now. Where's this alternative well, universe, It's bro? a different universe, I don't know, but there's two Roses right now. <laughs> and that's honestly, that's a lot of people though. Yeah. A lot of people, there's two, they have two paths in life they could choose. This is Rosa here, Lash Artistry. She decided she had a bad past, right? A bad history. You could either use that to, to be the reason why you went this direction or that direction. There's a, okay, um, two kids mm -hmm. grew up together and their dad's, their dad's an alcoholic, mm -hmm. okay? One kid said, my dad's an alcoholic, that's why I'm never gonna drink. Mm -hmm. The other kid said, my dad's an alcoholic, that's, that's why I'm an alcoholic. What decision are you gonna make? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you said, to circle it all together. It's decisions. It's about the decision you decide to, the decision you make in life, the decision how you look at something, the decision what meaning you put behind something, it's just one decision. That guy that I talked to yesterday, he's gonna make the decision mm -hmm. that's gonna change the trajectory of his whole family's dynasty. He's the one. He's the one. He's the one. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let me tell you something about that. So when you know, I homeschooled Natalie. So when we were about to start the high school portion, I said, OK, there's three paths for you. If You want to go here, here or here. This is the hardest path, which was, you know, Nova and all this stuff, whatever. And I said, if you do this path, we're not it's not going to be as rigorous. If you do this path, it's gonna be a little hard. If you do this path, you're gonna have, you know, Harvard, Nova, this, da, 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 all those top schools. Do you know this little girl chose the hardest path? Good. And that's what I'm teaching my children. I feel like, yeah, I know you're not a parent yet, but I'm sure that when you do have kids, you're gonna have the same mentality because I wanna set them up for success. Yeah. I don't want them to clam up when things get hard or when they fail at something or all of that. It's so important to impart that not only to your children, but to your friends. Like. Me and you, we're very blunt with each other. We're very honest. Like, Carolyn will tell you, I'd be like, girl, what we got going on? Asia, the same thing. Why? Because one of my mentors says this all the time, love the man's excellence. And if you care about that person, you're going to tell them the truth. Just like you did with that guy. That guy's going to go to the gym probably this week. He, he, right? This and week? Then, you know I don't work like that. He went today. He did? He better. I'm going to check in on him. Okay. Yeah. Call me and let me know. <laughs> <laughs> no, would. but you know, it took, you stopped for the one, right? Because we don't accept failure. We don't accept. And to, you know, the bottom line of this whole podcast is you get, you get to get to highlighted to decide where your life will be in the next five years. You get to decide what school your children are gonna go to. You get to decide if your kids are gonna have to get three jobs to pay through college or you're gonna be able to financially help them. You get to decide if you're gonna pay for your daughter's wedding, because my daughter's wedding is gonna be fire. Yeah. She's gonna have, if she, you want, you want an elephant? I got you. You want some doves to <laughs> pop out? <laughs> I got Done. you. Yeah. Okay? So, and what that's doing, my hard work and my ability to make quick decisions and follow through and do all of those things, Natalie's gonna reap the benefit. My other sons are gonna reap the benefit, right? Because I decided that they were gonna live a different life than what I lived growing up. And it's all about that decision that we've been talking about. 100%, you can decide to be a victim, you can decide to be a winner. Listen, bro, I don't identify with the whole victim mentality. I'm like, get your butt up and get to work. Keep in mind, sometimes we fall into it though. It's natural, but it's about being self-aware and getting yourself out of it. It's not like yeah. we're talking from a, a pedestal or a high horse. It's like, no, we no. go through it. Like I was literally there six months ago mm -hmm. being a victim, but I was self-aware. And you pulled yourself and out. And I pulled myself out and now I made a pivot that changed my life. No, and also, I, like when I go through things, like hard things, you know some of my stuff, like I give myself three days. After three days, I, Carolyn, right? Yeah. I'll be like, oh, this, uh, three days, uh, day three, I'm moving on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Because obviously I'm not a robot. I also have feelings and emotions and sometimes life I give it five you minutes. right in the face. No, you didn't because you just said the Facebook story. 
That was a problem. No, like, no. <laughs> no, 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 you just, no, no. Your homeboy had to come and tell you you had to go. But I wasn't hurt tripping about speech. it. Like I. Yes, you were. I was a victim about it. Yes. <laughs> That's tripping. But I wasn't like. <laughs> don't don't take it back now, cause we, we got the footage. Asia, play back the footage. <laughs> cause we got we got receipts. Okay, back to when things happen in your life, though. I give myself three days and I move the heck on. Yeah. That's it. That's my thing. Three days and I move on. After three days, that doesn't even matter. For sure. I've already dealt with it. I've moved on. It's done. Now, what do we have to do? You know? And so, listen, decisions will either make you or break you. They'll either make you rich or not. They're going to make you a good parent or not. They're going to make you happier. They're going to make you happy or not. Basically, everything concerning your whole entire life is depending on the decisions. And if there's a book that anyone should read, Think and Grow Rich, mm -hmm. obviously, guess what chapter one is? That book is, is kind of boring, Remember though, we but it is. It is. Point is, chapter it one, is. I think we discussed it last time, chapter one's title is A Decision. Yeah, it is kind and of It all boring. stems down to a decision. It's not boring. It is, bro. Have you, you know have you what? Read I the heard Devil? it on Audible. That's what, probably why the voice of that guy was Super. Mad have you read Outwitting the Devil? Yes. That book. That's one of Napoleon Hill's book. He's the one that wrote Thinking Grow Rich. That's my favorite book of all time. I yeah, read it no, twice you read a year. It every year. I love that book. So if you're going to pick a book since Thinking Grow Rich is boring, read Outwitting the Devil. And <laughs> if you don't was. want to read it, listen to the Audible. The Audible, mm -hmm. it's, it's a conversation with him and the devil. That thing will creep you out. But it oh, is thanks. a very powerful book. Yeah, li listen. Very powerful book. It's it's about you just setting the decisions and following through. Because people decide things and then they don't do them. Remember when I told you last podcast, I'm like, you know why I haven't started working out? Because I didn't want to. Because I didn't make a decision. Because I know once I do the decision, it's, it's over. over. Yep. And so I'm going to go pick up the key today for CrossFit so I can start my workout. I even went and bought myself workout clothes so I can be encouraged. I'm doing the thing. It helps. Sometimes when I'm bored at like work or something, I'll just buy a computer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know. And then you, and then I have you influence you me to but buy a computer. Like I bored. hate that computer too. <laughs> it's, a, it's a MacBook. I have hate you, it. Is it here? No. Why Can you, you bring it next time? Here? Yeah, you need to sit down with her. Yeah, bring it next time. Hour. Yeah, and then we'll just, uh, I'll Whatever, give her the breakdown. Bro, you guys are. If not, I'm going to take it. That's gonna I'll take better. it. She's a bully. <laughs> Do you see this little tiny thing right here? <laughs> <laughs> she goes, so. Da -da -da. When she starts with so and she does this. It's over. It's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, did, I was like, wow, <laughs> Carolyn. But, you know. All right, but guys, that's all we got for this episode. It's a decision. You can choose to be... A victim, you can choose to be a winner. What decision are you going to make? Bye. Bye.